Today, we're going to try to make a bike that orients to surfaces and has some minor physics and stuff um, to help out uh, Infernal Viper and something gray whose username I forget. Um, so they've been making reasonable attempts. So like they took the bike example that I had made and they put this way cooler bike on it. Um, they've put a lozenge collider on here, which would be a really good instinct if our lozenge colliders actually were implemented, but they're not. So I'm going to make a copy of their bike and make changes to the copy. This is also a copy of the game guys, if you're watching, so don't worry about that. Um, I didn't really, I didn't like go do an example for this that's prepared, so everybody will be on the journey of discovery with me as I get frustrated and try really hard not to swear. Um, let's see, do, do, do. let's change this to a sphere since those work. And hit the collision button to make it jump to the bottom of the thing. That's all I really care about. Cool. So in the current state of things, oh, they've got like separate entities for particles. I'll need to grab those. But so this basically works the same as the existing bike that I had made. Um, there's no real physics for it and the environment. They added the destructible script from the FPS to it. So it does do some like gravity. Um, I'm going to take that script off because all it does is gravity. And we'll be doing like, we'll just make all the bike physics in one script like together but let's see and currently doing vehicles in multiplayer is kind of a pain but we'll try to figure out something for that as well so and they've also borrowed a script from the oversight game that was being worked on so i'm going to turn that off i'm going to turn this off not sure why that's here not sure why this is here oh wait all right okay so maybe they intended for the bikes to be destructible i'll turn that on and i'll turn this back on but i'm going to turn off gravity because we'll do our own gravity what else do we have we have my terrible old bicycle script best office hours ever i love this energy thank you chris you guys are allowed to speak by the way I would feel less awkward if, if there was speaking. Like, Charles comes prepared and has excellent things to say. Not me so much. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure what this Can't make is us. doing here. I have no idea what the script even does, honestly. So this one looks like it, it does... So this is one of the things I was going to talk about. It does some raycasts, but it's not actually doing anything with them, seemingly it probably gives that information to a different script that isn't here. Um, anyway, I should probably put that on the ground now. Okay. So what we are going to do, uh, first, I'm going to rewrite this bike script in TypeScript. Shouldn't be that time consuming. And then we'll worry about the next steps. Uh, I could have done that beforehand, but I forgot it was a TypeScript. Oopsie poopsie. Uh, let's see. Bike. Is that scraping me or somebody else? Apologies if it's me. That was me, sorry. <laughs> For shame. Uh, um, yeah, I, I wondered if it was me because I've like... I have finagled things all over my desk to try to fit like a tablet up here for drawing and just everything is clustered around my left hand <laughs> waiting to be bumped. Uh, let's see, is there any, no, not really, that's pretty basic. Okay, don't need this, don't need that. Uh... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, and then we've got a bunch of events in here. Typing on an unusual keyboard, so I might have a bunch of typos. So we have a mount event where we take a mounty, which is going to be a player entity. And we remove the mountable tag from ourselves. And then we have 
have, we'll want an entity reference for that. I might go ahead and just make these uh, properties so we can watch them. Uh, and it didn't appear. Weird. Oh, because there's a compile error, right? Mount is going to be a new entity ref. So we'll set it to the player that's mounting the bike. And then we have some hacky crap that we do. Um, the other person who was making a vehicle game had all these things be configurable. I'm just going to go ahead and ape that. Maybe I should make these hidden in that case. Okay. So let's see. Do, 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 do. So we'll have an offset. So we'll have writer offset is a vector three. And we'll just rip off the default from this. Y is eight, everything else is identical. Whoopsie. All right, and then we'll have an Euler for rotation. That will just be the same. Whoops. Just be the same as the thing. Um, what else? So we do. Whoops. So we'll grab the world transform. And then we'll take the position. And then we'll copy our own position. And then we'll add the offset. And I'm just going to split these into some shorter lines. Can I do an add on an Euler? I don't know if I can. Help if I could type. Oh, it doesn't exist. Okay. Hmm. How does one do that then? Well, that's lame. Okay, we'll assume that the rotation is just static so that I don't have to screw with matrices or anything for now. Uh, I feel like that's PG, a PG swear, right? Sure. Uh, what else do we do? And then we set the entity parent. Okay, so that's all we do there. And then we have the dismount event. What's the problem? Oh. Uh, sure. Yeah, we could do that in the like, oh, actually we could just set the local position. We could do mounty local transform position, copy this writer offset, I believe. And then we could just copy the uh, well, the local transform rotation should be the same. I'm not sure. We'll set it just in case. Mounty local transform rotation set YXZ. And then we can do false, and that should do the same exact effect. And then we'll have a dismount event. Da 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 da. Not sure why we restate what the entity is, but we do. Uh, we'll add the mountable tag back to ourselves. Okay, and then looks like we do some hinky crap to just forcibly reset our uh, pitch and roll. That makes sense to me. Oh wait, that would be 
yaw zero zero, I believe, because the order. Well, no, we pass them in in X Y Z order all the time. We just specify what order they're applied in. I'm silly. Ignore me. X goes first, I think. Okay. And uh, let's see. Well, we need to unparent them from us, I believe. Transform rotation set. Okay. What's the problem? Oh, uh, this time we do want to preserve the world transform. Let's see, and then we'll say. Passing it in is kind of redundant, right? Like we shouldn't need that there. We should just, we should do like. Mounty equals this Mounty. I want to change Mounty to Rider because I keep thinking of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Okay. No Canadians in my game. Uh, let's see. And there should always be a Rider, so maybe we should throw if there's not one in this case, but. We'll just wait and see. Uh, da, 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 da. So we'll do that. And, well, I suppose that would make more sense down here. Okay, so we'll set null, we'll set the, fix the rotation. Uh, we need to stop the bike. Do that up here. Actually, let's just do that up at the top. Okay, so there's all that crap. Okay, reset done no longer matters. Uh, and then we have some stuff in tick. I think most of the stuff that matters is in tick. So one of the, like all this example really has is like you can speed around and you can tilt the bike to steer. Um, that's kind of all it does. So what we're going to add when we get this done is we're going to do some raycasts to orient it to whatever surface it's on. Um, and we're going to do some basic physics so that you can bump into things and lose velocity and that sort of stuff, have gravity, etc. It's still going to be pretty basic. I do wish the lozenge controller was like the lozenge collider was on the table. Um, that would be really nice for a vehicle shaped thing, but not at the moment, I don't believe. Uh, so let's see. So we have a post-collision tick for this, and we have a regular tick. I'm not sure why we use both, but I guess I'll find out. Reading my prehistoric code. So we have a post-collision tick. Uh, we get our rider. And if we don't have one, we'll just bail out. I don't think we'd do anything with it otherwise, yep. So it looks like after every frame, we just make sure that the player writing us is oriented correctly. So we'll just duplicate that. Or well, we'll do local transform since we're parented to the bike. And we'll copy the offset that we set for that. Uh, then we want to get the the local up axis uh, for the bike. So say up is this entity world transform get up. I believe is the function nowadays. Yep. What's the problem? Oh, duh. Whoopsie. Okay. So we've got that. Um, Looks like we manually set the offset in here. We don't need to do that. Actually, we might not even need to do this. Okay, so we're just setting the position. So we don't even, we don't need any of this code. We just need that. So. Whoops. Okay. Easy peasy. 
deleting things feels good. It's like the only programming tip that I would ever have is just delete everything. Be great. What have I done? Okay. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Bail out if we don't have a writer. This probably will change because even if nobody is riding the bike, we will want to do the bike's physics and that sort of stuff. So this is likely to change, but we shall see. Uh, let's see, it looks like we grab the entities transform just for convenience. I don't know why we have delta time times four. That's probably because there's some baked in um, acceleration for the bike in this example script. We'll make that configurable instead when we get to it. To do movement controls. Yeah, I bet. Okay, uh, let's see. Lean when turning. And these are just in an inner scope. Like this stuff all happens in its own scope because I don't care about these variables for any of the other code. I only care about them in here. In JavaScript, it doesn't matter that they're in a scope because every var gets hoisted out to the top of the function anyway. So it's <clears throat> kind of pointless that JavaScript has scopes in it. But in TypeScript, as far as I'm aware, these matter as long as you say let or const. They still don't matter. Like if I do var x, now x just exists everywhere in here because it's JavaScript is a genius language with excellent design decisions. Um, but we can avoid all of that nonsense, luckily. So here we have another hard-coded value for this is how far the bike can lean. We could make this configurable so you could have little like way for thin bikes or maybe you lean way far over and then you could have bigger bulkier bikes where you only lean a little etc uh, and that can be const because we're never reassigning it uh, and then we have roll which is how which is just a reference uh it's just okay sorry it's not a reference that's the original roll of the bike this frame and then we just do a little stuff with it so okay so what this means is this is delta time this frame times four so that means for every second that the game advances this will uh this is like four times right so that means it'll take a quarter second for us to reach this max lean angle so we do one minus t times roll so okay so this is just an inline lerp linear interpolation if any listeners don't know what that is i will show you on wikipedia so it's just mapping linearly between two values uh, so you have some so in our case you have whatever the role currently is and whatever the role is going to be which is this max lean angle uh, and we're moving at four times the speed of time in the game between those two. So we're mapping from whatever roll is to max lean angle onto zero to one. Uh, Wikipedia math is not helpful for quick explanations. Here's what looks to be some C or something, maybe GLSL, I assume C, um, which just shows this is what I've done in line, basically. Uh, we have a lerp function in the engine. I didn't know about it at the time, I don't think. So let's see first. We're going to have to rewrite some of this anyway, so I'll show you all the things. So we want to get uh, what used to be move right um, in the engine would be, let's see, this game input. Uh, and it's like, can I please? OK. Actually, what does this even have in it anymore? Okay, we want get stick one, and then we want the x from it. Uh, and I think that should be the exact same value as what this used to be. 
we might have to invert it depending on if my math is stupid, although I don't think it is. Uh, so then let's see, what else do we need here? So we'll say transform rotation Z equals Matthew Tills, I want to say. And we don't have lerp, annoyingly, but we do have map linear, so we can type 0 and 1 into it every time we use it, and we'll be good to go. So we've got our thing that we're lerping, which is roll, right? Uh, and then, let's see, we're mapping it from... No, wait. No, 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 no. We're mapping T, right? And we have 0 to 1, and then we're mapping that onto roll to max lean angle. So, uh, astute listeners will note that I'm not actually... T I'm not actually lerping from roll to max lean angle, like, not directly with, like, the time of the game. It's indirected. I'm just doing it by this amount every frame from what... Because, like, to do this properly, I would need to know the starting angle, right? So we could assume it's zero or something, and I would need to know how long I'd been leaning since the beginning. And we could add a timer to do that, but this is kind of a stateless, hacky, not real way to do it, which is just... We'll lerp by some large factor, like the time pass times four every frame, um, and it will seem pretty smooth because when we get close to the actual value, um, the difference every frame will be imperceptible. Um, I don't know if that would spam net messages for the transform changing. I don't think it would because it also checks a threshold. So we'll see about that. Um, what else do we have? Okay. Well, if I could type, that would be awesome. Um, what else do we have in here? Okay, that's handled. Then we have, quote, basic movement. I'm just going to go ahead and replace all those vars with let's. And then we'll just copy this block and fix it up. Do, 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 do. Okay. See what we have. It's indented wrong. Can I just like? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pro tips: F1. If you have an F1 on your keyboard, will open the command palette, uh, and you can do things like format your document, and it'll fix any indentation problems you have, etc. Uh, another trick is if you hold a Control K, if you do Control K and then hit a number, it'll fold that level. So like I just folded all the functions by hitting uh, control K2. I need to get one of those extensions that like shows your key presses on the screen. I think that would be good for future versions of this. I'm gonna go ahead and unfold it all and get back to this. Uh, let's see. These are all things that should be configurable. So let's go and make them configurable. So we shall have max speed. And we shall have turn speed, which looks like is an angle. So we'll just do, we'll do a number range. What is the default value I've got actually? I've got math pi times 0.5. Okay, well, we're gonna call that 90. And then we're gonna go in here and set a number range from zero to 180. And we'll just convert this to an angle in our other code. Radians, I should say. Uh, and then we have acceleration, which is max speed times a quarter by default. Acceleration equals what is a quarter times 600? Let's see. It is 150. So we'll just put 150 in there for default. What else do we have? Damping. Okay. So damping is kind of emulating friction um, because why bother doing actual friction? This isn't Gran Turismo. Um, we'll just do. We'll just damp the velocity by a constant amount every frame. Uh, let's see. So what we'll do here for these? For now, I'm just going to set all these from the properties, and then we'll clean it up. So we'll say this max speed 
turn speed is going to be this turn speed times math pi, although we also have a helper for that, I think. It's like degrees to radians, yep. Kind of unnecessary, it's just the number times pi, or it's the number over 180 times pi, so anyway. Let's see, acceleration, we just have that as a property now, cool, cool, and damping is also just a property, okay, and we'll make this one a number range from 0 to 1, so we get a nice slider for it, okay, alright, so these are going to change again, so we have, we'll just grab this stick, this game input get stick one or what is it? It's like is it controls? Aha, uh -huh, okay. So game controls move forward. It's going to be stick dot y and then game controls move right. It's going to be stick dot x, although might, I think it might be negative stick dot x actually. Uh, so we'll see about that. And then for delta time, we're going to grab that up here. Uh, so let's, delta time is this game frame delta time. We'll change this to delta time. So we're not grabbing it twice. Okay. World transform forward is get forward, I think. Uh, if I could type, that would help. Okay. Why am I doing that when I already have? I already have it. That's goofy. Okay. So, let's see if we're in business yet. We probably won't be because the script on the player uh, will be sending the wrong events. Okay, so partially things work, but we need to change, yeah, so we're getting the JavaScript version of the entity, the player entity, we're not actually getting the wrapper that TypeScript needs, so we need to change the player script. So I'm going to just grab the default player real quick, uh, which should be TypeScript now. I don't know if that's been rolled out to early access. It has not. Okay, so that's a bummer. <sighs> we could use it anyway. I could grab the FPS player template. I could make a copy of this template, which is the actual one from Infernal Vipers game. Does it crash immediately? I assume it will. Of course, the camera's not first person either. <laughs> I don't know if the camera's intended to be first person for that or not. For for the whatever game this would be used for. Actually, why did I close that? I need to look at that. Wrong guy, go away. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's take a look at our fella here. If I could select it. Okay. Okay, this has also got a bunch of old school scripts in it. Hmm. Well, in any case, I'll just grab the Mounty Player thing and we'll make a copy and see what we can do with it. All right. Um, like example player, why not? Okay, so there's that. We'll go and grab it. Go ahead and change our player over to this guy. And we'll turn this off. And we'll add a new user script. Time to go rewrite another script. Yay! This is going to eat so much of the time. I apologize. I didn't really think about it beforehand. What do we call the script here? Bike example. Okay. We'll call this one bike example player. Chris says, seems like there needs to be a purge of everything that's not TypeScript. 
Jacques would agree with you, and I would agree with Jacques. Uh, it's just getting to that stage is taking a while. It's a bunch of work, you know. It will be pleasant when it ultimately arrives in the glorious future. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff commented out, and I don't know what it was for. So we're just going to remove that. Okay. <laughs> the default text of a script has this space. It has this trailing space saved in it after the closing brace of start. And it kills me every time. Let's see. Okay. Uh, this is doing a bunch of stuff. Stuff. This is doing the UI for mounting a thing, as well as other things, so we'll have font, it's a new font ref, and we'll go and grab one of the fonts, and we'll change this to font, okay, and then what do we have? We have a script ref, the bane of my existence, uh, instead we are going to... Well, I don't want to edit this because that'll be annoying later, although I think we'll probably just slam over the changes, so it's fine. Um, I'm going to add some events in here. They're called start and stop. I forgot about that. That's goofy. Um, so what we'll have is we'll have uh, this enable movement, because this is what it's called in the new scripts. Uh, and we'll say this running equals true. This movement velocity set zero zero zero. Whoops. And then we'll have this disable movement again because that's what it's called in the new TypeScript version. Running equals false. Okay. What is the problem? Oh, right, I have to do the equals function since I'm adding it in this way. Okay, so there's that. Pay no attention to the ancient JavaScript behind the curtain. Um, so we don't need this anymore because we're just going to send an event. Uh, don't need to specify that, it'll always be the same. That will also always be the same. This one we do need. Oh my goodness, I'm not taking a break. Go away. Uh, let's see. Uh, writing animation, skeletal animation ref. Okay. We could just call it writing, but then maybe that would look like it could be a Boolean or something, so we'll just leave it as this. Writing animation, I don't remember what writing animation it is on the old player for this. Uh, well, hang on. I just have the script, I can just look. What is it? Seated idle 30 FPS. Okay, seated idle. Yay! All right. Go ahead and update the template. Okay. What do we have? some events on mount uh, okay so that's assuming that there's one near us okay so we'll have nearest mount or we'll say nearby mount equals entity ref Whoa. okay so we'll say let mount if there isn't one, we'll bail. Otherwise, let's see this entity send event, disable movement. That covers all of that. Uh, we need to 
Okay, we'll say let information equals this entity. This is kind of a point of friction. Actually, I can't do that because it's the old JavaScript script. Heaven's sake. Okay. Mm. Uh, I wish things moved between our environments a little bit more easily sometimes. Okay, so to do play the writing animation. Uh, let's see. We'll say mount send event on mount. It should really be like on mounted or something instead of that. Mounted on dismounted. Okay. Unmounted. Uh, we'll pass it ourselves. So that part should be fixed. Uh, and then we set our own collision response. So I don't think I have this shortcut anymore either. So we'll say for let collider of this entity. Yeah, it's not in there. Get components by type. Component type collision. And we'll say collider response type equals what is it called? It's like collision. No, collider response type. Hmm. There we go. Lord. That is a mouthful. Okay. So we've got that. And then we have the dismount. We will say, I think we already do this on the other one, but we'll go ahead and do it here. I already do this on the, on this side, I believe, on dismounted. Yeah, we do. But then we also bother doing all of this other stuff, so we could just leave it in one place. I don't care about it being redundant for now. We might change it later. I'll leave a note. It is not time for a micro break. Work rave, leave me alone. Okay, um, let's see. Let me do this whole exercise again. This is, of course, assuming that all the colliders on the player, well, generally we only have one, but it's assuming that they will need to be dynamic whenever we're not writing something. Um, that's probably always going to be the case, but you might also have some triggers on your player template, I don't know. In any case, um, we will sweep that under the rug for now. Uh, we need to track if we are initialized. What else? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's grab this. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Don't need this, don't need that. Don't need these. Um, don't need that. Don't really need that either. Okay, uh, and then we have a tool tip that we create to mount a bike, I suppose. So, I'll have this. give ourselves admin access since we're doing some UI stuff with the current UI system. So we'll say this tooltip equals need TS ignore. G script API UI create text. Oops. And we need this uh, font engine object unless that's changed and then we'll say press E to mount or to ride perhaps this tooltip set position looks like we're just sticking it relatively near the middle of the screen 5.2 and then we're going to hide the tooltip 
since we're probably not starting right next to a bicycle, or at the very least don't want to assume that we are. And it looks like the rest of our work is going to be in the uh, collision callbacks and in tick. I'm going to grab these ones. Go write those real quick. Okay. Boop. All right. So if the okay, that's not where I want it to be. On trigger enter. Other is going to be an entity, and I'll say if the other entity if it is mountable. And wow, this is hacky. I can't believe I did this. But we're going to leave it for now. Besides, why do I need to press the. Why do I need to change the. Whatever. Uh, and then we'll set it to visible. Okay, that seems fine. And then we have on collision stay. Where we literally do the same exact thing. So if, if I guess if a vehicle is not using a trigger collider, if it's using rigid or something, and we're just like pushed up against it, that should still work. And then we have on trigger exit, where we do the opposite. I think this is a really hacky way of doing this. By the way, there are better ways to decide if you can interact with something. I'm not going to go into it here because I've already killed nearly an hour just rewriting JavaScript. So uh, let's see this nearby mount. We're going to set that to null. What the problem with doing it this way is if you're near two vehicles and on the like same frame you like stop interacting with one and start interacting with another, uh, it might miss it. Um, But I suppose for our purposes here today, I just have to leave it. What else do we have? Do, do, do. Okay. And these are going to be, these collision callbacks are going to be complicated later uh, when we do physics-y stuff. Uh, not on the player, though, the, on the bike. Never mind. Ignore me. Uh, let's see. Tick. I'm going to indent that some. Okay. What have we got? So we do sort of a first tick in it um, to add the animation for riding the bike, but we can't do that right now. So add riding animation. Uh, oof. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but my neck just cracked really loud and it felt amazing. Um, I thought that was your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, e pressed will be. Oh, we need another private variable. E was down is false. And we'll also set that and start. So we'll say E pressed is not. E was down and E is down currently. Keyboard. What is what is it called? Is key pressed key E, I think. Is that fine? Apparently that's fine. Uh, but that is a really long identifier, so I'll call this E down. Okay, so there's if E is down, then we have if E is pressed, and then we'll say E was down equals E down for next frame. This is just to detect the exact frame that a key is pressed for anybody wondering, and so then we'll say mount is this. What is it? Hang on. Oh, we need to have two of these things. So nearby mount is one that we're not writing right. 
So then we'll have the actual amount, which is a thing being ridden, I believe that's correct. Sure. We should probably set those as well. And start. this and so if we're not writing something uh, else if we are writing something okay if we're not writing something and there is something nearby to ride If there's something nearby and we pressed E, then we shall mount the entity and we shall, I never did the networking so that doesn't matter. We shall hide the tooltip. Why don't we just do that in the mount function? Goofy. Okay. Let's set the nearby mount to none. That should also be in here. Let's just go down there and do that. Da 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 da. Set that to null. Set that invisible. Okay. Something I just thought I should maybe add is if we have no font set, then all of the UI stuff will crash. And it would be better to just know what happened. So I'm going to check for that and throw an error. Um, let's see. So we covered these and then right, oh. Oh, I see. Then why do I? Well, that's just still. That's, I'm, oh God, I hate reading my own old code so much, especially code written in a hurry. Sorry if I've gotten quiet. By the way, I'm mostly just talking to myself. But I don't know. This kind of riveting content only available here every other Friday. Dot Big Bang, everybody. Um. This tooltip, oops, text equals press E again to stop writing. Okay. <coughs> uh, apologies, I just had a wicked sneeze. Um, okay, so there's that, there's that. So if we're writing and we push E, we will want to stop writing. So hang on, do we not? Oh, okay, so we, we handle that in there. We don't handle it in here though, which is interesting. Okay, we do it there by the looks. Okay, say so this on dismount, right? And I think all of the stuff that's in here we can just handle in on dismount, actually. I'm just going to copy these bits. And we'll go do that. On dismount. Okay. Great. Uh, so we will say, first we need to get the thing that we're writing. So... Actually, I don't think we set this, so I need to set that also. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and set that here. Okay. So we grab it, and then if it exists, we'll send an event on dismounted. We'll pass ourselves in shouldn't be necessary, um, 
but we'll leave it for now. And we'll say this entity send event enable movement for the movement script so we can walk around again. Uh, and I'll say this mount set null. Okay, and then we'll hide the tooltip. Okay. There is all of that. And presumably it will not work. I will have screwed something up. Let's see. Oh dear. Okay, it's working for neither of them, so that's excellent. Uh, oh, what do we got? It's not a font asset. It's the UI that screwed me. I always knew it would come to this. Uh, oh, this is no longer necessary, I bet. Or maybe it is. Aha! Success, okay. So I think that'll be all we need to do with our player template, but let's make sure real quick. Hmm. Did that event, can I not send, whoa, can I not send an event from uh, TypeScript to JavaScript? I think that was fixed. Now I'm not so sure. Let's try this again. Push E, and what happens? I'm parented for like a second, and then I unparent. Why would that be the case? Weird. Whoa, hang on. Did I change scale? I did. I'm changing scale every time. What the heck is going on? I'm like a little munchkin. Okay. What on earth is happening? The scale is uniform. What's the problem? Yeah, everything is fine. Nothing is ruined, etc. Hmm. Ow. That's crazy. Um. Hmm. Is the movement script doing something naughty? I don't think it is, but we shall see. We don't do any parenting stuff in here by the looks. So that shouldn't be the issue. Hmm. Hmm. This is like totally not any of the stuff that I wanted to talk about. I didn't think about it beforehand though. Apologies. Let's get the actual player. Do they also shrink? Yes, they do. That is just insanity. Okay. Oh, I think maybe when we parent and say don't preserve world transform, it's possible that it copies your entire transform, not just your rotation and position. It probably copies the scale too. So I still don't know why we're being unparented, but I think the reason we're shrinking is because we're getting parented to something which is like 0.8 scale which is really weird. That means we do need to preserve the world transform when we do that, first of all, which is annoying, admittedly. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. set parent entity. Um, where's the other one? Where's the other one? That parent entity, true. Am I still shrinking? 
Well, at least I'm not shrinking anymore. That's good. Okay. I wonder how broken this one. Yeah, this one's totally broken still. As it should be. Okay. Um, did it. Well, let's go and do some classic printf debugging. Okay, that's what I thought. I don't know why the key press is being like double, double counted though. Let's see what silly thing I have done. Hmm. Ah. Well, that was very special of me. Okay. Great. We did it, everybody. Oh my god. I don't know why all of those things are happening. Let's go ahead and make this no raycast for a start. I think maybe my input code for the <laughs> for the joystick is kind of wrong. Oh boy. That's really funny. All right. Well. Let's fix that. Uh, first of all, I want to turn the damping up a little bit. See if it's still movable. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool. Let's fix the leaning. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's make sure it actually is this being broken first, and it's not just weirdly... Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Is Should this be negated? I don't think it should. Like, I am not... I'm not pressing any directions, which is very fascinating. So stick X should by all rights be zero, not whatever, whatever this is. Um, oh wait, I'm no longer using this. I've deleted something I shouldn't have. Derp. Uh, max lean angle times move right oh my god okay okay and we are leaning the wrong way i think yes we are okay so my intuition was right i just goofed that okay cool cool so now we lean the way one would lean on a motorcycle cool beans okay we should maybe also limit the max lean angle by your velocity because you would need to lean farther the faster you are going, right? But uh, that's just cosmetic. We shall leave it for now. Um, all right, so with that, we're back to where we started. Yay, it's been an hour and two minutes. Um, what else? Okay, so the next thing uh, is, so when we're on our happy bicycle, Here's a happy bicycle, and here's a happy person on the bicycle lifting weights. Anyway, so we're going along, and can I draw like a straight line? That would be cool. Okay, so we're going along on our bicycle, and let's say there's something like an incline. What currently happens, of course, is we will just barrel through the incline like this, and we will be sad. Um, what we would like to do is roll along the incline, right? Pretty simple, and we would be happy about it. Um, and this transition spot is kind of awkward. What you'd want is you'd want one wheel here and one wheel here. So the way we're going to do that, can I move around? Spacebar, okay, yay. 
Oh, but it's like the canvas isn't infinite. So what's the point? Awesome. Okay. So we would like to be able to go up inclines and things. Uh, the way we're going to do that somewhat naively is with raycasts. So what we're going to do, let's say that this is our bike. So we have, we don't like, we're not doing a spring joint with like suspended wheels or anything. So really this diagram is more complicated than it needs to be. Our bike is really just a line, right? <laughs> um, conceptually. And we have the player glued to it like vaguely in this spot. But so what we're going to do as the bike moves along is we're going to pick some point above the bike, maybe about here, and we're going to cast a ray downward. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to cast a ray and wherever it hits the ground, we're going to stick the tire at that spot, right? Um, this is going to be a little bit tricky. And so we can do a ray at the front wheel and a ray at the back wheel. And if we do that in this case, we'll get this point and this point, right? And then we need to rotate the bike about wherever its origin happens to be, such that the wheels are touching the ground in both places, right? Uh, and that's what we want to do. And in terms of the physics of the bike, we will need to know how steep this incline is so we can change the bike's velocity appropriately. Um, thinking about it, I'm probably not going to get this done during the office hours, but we will try. And we might also want to do, we might also want to do other stuff, like we might want to cast a ray from the center of the bike or cast even multiple rays uh, just to figure out, are we on like a, f are we are, are we flat on a surface or is like one wheel off and one wheel on and like all those sorts of things that would affect our velocity and stuff. That's probably a little too complicated for what we'll end up doing, but just conceptually, this is what we want. Um, and so really what we would actually want is let's say that this is the ground, right? Um, let's say that, oh my God, can I draw a diagonal? Thank you. So let's say that we have this ramp, right? And we are oriented on this ramp. What we actually care about is this direction, which is called the surface normal for the ramp. It is a vector which is perpendicular to the surface of the ramp in our current collision stuff. I don't think we can actually get this surface normal technically. Um, this is what we would want. Um, for example, uh, Infernal Viper et al. If you've played Breath of the Wild on the Switch and you shield surf, uh, the thing that sticks your shield to the ground is this surface normal for whatever surface you're on, um, which is also why you can clip through walls. But anyway, we want to have this. We don't actually have it, so we're kind of faking it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to cast the rays, um, figure out what they hit, get the surface normal of what they hit, and use that. We're not going to get the surface normal, we're just going to get, we hit this spot, right? And we have to do the best we can with that, and we'll see how that goes. I think we can probably get something tolerable out of it. Um, but we shall see. So, from our current example, what I'm probably going to do is we'll get the bounding box of the bike, right? Oh my God. Okay. We'll get the bounding box of the bike and then we'll pick a spot near the front and near the back and we'll cast rays from there and we'll use that to orient it. I don't know where the origin actually is. Oh, it is conveniently in the center. So we could be somewhat naive, but I'm probably just going to do the whole bounding box so that it'll work with any model in theory, hopefully, maybe. Um, so let's see. How should we do this? Uh, I believe Rob also made a similar example with a car that uses three ray casts um, to get the plane that you're resting on. Um, I'm going to try to find that real quick. It's definitely called Rob something. Is it Rob thing? No, I think that's our stand up game actually. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. It was a while ago. I don't remember what it was called, but it would be a good illustration if I had it handy. I keep hitting the wrong button. 
I'm on a different keyboard than normal. It is the stand-up game, Joy. Okay. Uh, is it called car or something? Aha! Wrong button. The keyboard I'm using today has the Alt key and Windows key swapped from the one that I normally use. Can you tell? So here, as we go along, you can see these little boxes and lines. These are the rays being cast. Uh, these are where they're landing. And then the big pink line in the middle is the plane that we've decided based on these three ray casts. So we're basically averaging the those to get that. So as you can see, we can go up on the ramp and we will orient to the ramp. And there's kind of a smooth gradient, see, because we're averaging the three quote unquote surface normals, right? Um, this doesn't account for every kind of situation, like if we run off the edge, uh, etc. But it's a good example. And I'm going to see what he did and steal it. Uh, Let's see, so we cast array at the front left, the front right, and in the back. You could do the same thing for our motorcycle, even though it's very skinny and not really a car. We still kind of, it makes sense that you do three because you need three to get the plane, right? Uh, let's see, centroid, da, 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 da. I'm just going to steal all of these things, okay. So, let's say that we'll cast a ray from this corner of the hitbox, this corner of the hitbox, and then at the back in the center. So, let's come in here and we'll say private, front left, well, we'll do this, we'll do rays, well, no we won't. Ray front left equals new ray. Ray front right. Ray back. Uh, maybe we should say rear or something. Posterior. But then I would have to change the other ones to anterior, and I'm not doing that, it's too much typing. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, that's annoying. Hmm, I hate allocations, but whatever. Well, we could set it and start. I suppose that's fine, actually, now that I think about it. So we'll have bounds, we'll do this entity, get, oh no, get, what is it, like largest bounding box or something, get bounding box, here we go, mm, optional target, oh okay, so we can pass in one to not do an allocation, that's the current bounding box, Local entity space. Apply the world transform to get it the box world space. Well, it's fine having it in entity space for our purposes. For now, we will need to like. Oh my god, I'm not taking a break. Go away. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see the pop ups telling me to take a break from typing, but. Ugh. Uh, sorry, I'm having a bit of a brain fart. This has gone really long so far. Uh. Okay, so we'll grab our bounding box, and then we'll say ray front left set, we'll make a new vector 3, which is going to be, well, let's do this. <laughs> front left corner is going to be a new vector 3. And that's going to be, how's this laid out? Center, da, 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 da. min and max. Okay, that's what we want. So from the min and max, 
I'm trying to like logically, I don't know if it's the top corner at the bottom of the entity or the top. If we had debug rendering, I could just render the points and see. Uh, I suppose I can just do this. And we shall find out. So the bounding box of the model is, okay, so min is on the bottom, that's cool, okay. So, and those are unscaled, since they're in entity space, we'll need to scale them up to the world scale. Um, and I don't know if this is safe to modify or not. Hmm. So we'll say... max let's grab that um, grab our own scale real quick Oops. alrighty then we shall can I apply like a whole not without getting a matrix okay Charles is messaging me. No oh, biggie. Okay, uh, let's see. I would need to apply a matrix to fix that. It's like if you only care about scale on one axis, you don't really have to um, worry about it. Which for these, I suppose, we don't really care about the Y scale because we're going to be casting down from up above the bike anyway. We could also just say that, hey, this only works if the bike's model is at the origin. Um, let's see. So we'll just do this the kind of yucky way. Um, no, no, it doesn't work. Um, we'll do this. So bounds min dot x times equal. This is really hacky. Uh, can I multiply two vectors together without doing some? Can I do like pairwise multiplication? Because that's what I want. Okay, it's pairwise. I wish it said that it was pairwise, but whatever. Okay. So that gives us our scaled, so our world coordinates. Um, I legitimately didn't see anyone in here at any point, or am I blind? Are office hours going on? There are loads of us in here. What are you talking about, Matthew? Uh, oh, there's a Charles in here. Hello. Hello. Uh, work rave, go away. I'm not being healthy today. Scram. Yeah. Yeah. To get you up to speed, Charles, I have spent uh, the first hour rewriting things in TypeScript because I forgot to do it. <laughs> so. So we've now gotten the bike back to its original state, but in TypeScript. That's still pretty cool, though. I mean, it is a cool bike. It is a very cool bike. I am envious of the voxeling skills of our community. I turned on no raycast, so I don't know why it's spazzing out. Magic. Okay. So, let's see. And 
so the front left corner will be the minimum on X and the maximum on Z, I want to say, and the minimum on Y. Um, so that will be bounds min dot X, bounds max dot Z, bounds min dot Y, and then we'll have front right corner. min bounds max dot x bounds max dot z Ugh. bounds min dot y and then we'll have the rear middle which is going to be zero since this is centered, thankfully, the way you'd really do this is you'd be like, you do this, you'd be like bounds max dot x minus bounds min dot x over two in case the model wasn't centered. Um, but these are good voxelers here and, they're, and it's centered, so we'll just say zero bounds min z bounds min y. Okay. So that should be our three points where we want to cast rays from. Um, we will we will be offsetting them up some, um, and of course every frame will need to transform these um, into like the entity's local space to get the actual points. But anyway, let's see. Oh goodness, it's time for stand up in ten minutes. I might have to make this a two-parter. Uh, or come back to it later since I haven't even gotten to any of the useful stuff yet uh, let's see so way front left set we have the front left corner as our origin and or should we just make new rays every time I don't know hmm we'll probably have to set those every frame but to do that we need to store these as well okay we'll do that just transform these into world space and reframe. So we got those. that and let's go ape rob's thing some more hmm. okay centroid I imagine we'll want that but we'll wait and put that in later. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. Can you guys hear the, the Twilight Princess in the background? Probably not since you can barely hear me, but I'm curious. Oh no, were people unable to join? Dang it. Uh, let's 
see. What are you doing in here, Rob? Oh, right. Yeah, we'll be using that every frame. Real talk, we could do something like Unity where we just have like vector 3 up and vector 3 down, etc. That's just like constants. Because I've noticed this sort of thing in a bunch of scripts. It seems a bit unnecessary. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, can I just like, can I just have that? That's cool. What happens if I just do that? Ah, right, yeah. That would be a funny way to break something. Yeah, there's not really a way to do that in JS, is there, other than just throwing a big ol' exception. So he has a cast ray function, or we pass in an origin, and we do a voxel ray cast, which makes sense, I suppose. Okay, sure, why not? Ray function. We'll have a vector three origin, and we're gonna call it cast ray down. Uh, and let me just ape this real quick. And hmm. not grab the entities anymore? Is that not a thing? Hmm. What? Do, 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 do. Oh, I can. I just grab them. Neat. Alright. Have we really not have a ray cast in here that does that, right? Collider intersecting ray. Hmm. Isn't there like a static method or something that does the ray cast? Yeah. I don't know why that's here, but okay. And oh dear, it doesn't have a uh Expect two to three arguments. Well, what would they be, TypeScript? Thank you. New array. This down. Ugh. Ray length. I don't know. A number. Let's say we'll check within about, I don't know, 50 units or something. I'll actually, if we're casting from anywhere near the bottom of the thing, we would need to know how tall it is. Let's just make it a big number for now and we'll deal with it later. <laughs> okay. And then we'll just say if there are no results, Null. Actually, that doesn't. That's kind of unnecessary. <laughs> Null is free in JavaScript, after all. Can you do these sort of bashy things? Would be like return result length and result or null. Can you do that? 
probably not a good well, idea, but it's What are you trying to do, Penny? Like Oh, I'm just nitpicking conciseness. So like let's say if there are no results you want to return null instead of the empty array. Can you do this like kind of bash crap? You can definitely like it'll early out of the return, but early out of the boolean essentially. Right. So if the first one doesn't pass, but you won't be able to pass back um the two different types that I think. Right. See, that's what I wondered, but I wasn't sure because I have seen, like, like I know this is a Lua idiom, but like sometimes I will see things like you know let x equals foo or zero, right? Something like this. Yeah. So you can do that with like uh, un null and undefined. Right. Um, let me type in chat. So like blah question question mark like default. Yeah. You could do stuff like that, basically. Right. Interesting. I I think it's simpler to do it the way you've done it. It makes yeah, uh, it's a little bit more sense. readable, maybe. Just curious, though. Anyways, uh, oh my goodness, it's time for stand up. I have to cut this off. Um, if I do a second part, I'll probably just record it, um, and not be in chat because you know drink and bathroom breaks, etc. Um, but I will try to get this to a working state this afternoon and do the part that people were actually asking about. <laughs> um, but thanks everybody for coming. Um, if you have any topics for next time or any questions or anything, just go ahead and post those in CIP related or another CIP channel and I'll try to get to them today. But I'm going to go and get a glass of water for stand up. I'll see everybody later. Bye.